and hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here, investigating your favorite movies, and um, yeah. So <laughs> this is very weird because when I was young, I was really not interested in Star Wars like at all. I don't know what's all the fuzz about. I mean, everyone's talking about Star Wars. Like, oh my God, it's this crazy series and it's still going on. It's crazy. And I'm like, um, I don't really know much about it, and I don't really care about it all that much. And for a while, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give Star Wars a try. I'm going to start from episode one, and if it hooks me, it hooks me. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So um, it isn't until very recently I decided to watch Star Wars <laughs> episode one. The Phantom Menace. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna watch starting from A New Hope, even though I know A New Hope is the first Star Wars movie called Star Wars. Um, but I decided to watch the prequel first because I thought that you know if I watch the uh, first three movies first, I will be extremely let down in four, five, six. So you know what? I'm gonna try to keep my hopes up. So I'll watch 4, 5, 6 first before 1, 2, 3. Meaning that I will be watching the prequel first before the original trilogy. So uh, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, released in the year 1999. Written and directed by the one and only George Lucas. Who is also, by the way, the writer for the original trilogy, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back and uh, Return of the Jedi, I think. Um, yeah, so Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. <sighs> I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, I, I didn't go into this movie expecting anything, and yet I was still kind of underwhelmed. Like, I just, it just seems like a really regular sort of um, sci-fi fantasy epic to me you know it's not that it's bad it's not terrible by any means but it just doesn't quite pop out maybe back in the late 90s maybe this kind of movie is you know very refreshing and very new but i just don't see anything all that interesting about this movie i just i just don't see anything all that interesting all that fascinating it, the characters none of them are really all that interesting or rootable the world building while i can tell that george lucas is very creative and ambitious it's not particularly mind-blowing it's not lord the lord of the rings world you know even even the song of ice and fire world it feels more interesting and complex than this one but even so, um, I still think there are several pretty good aspects about this movie. So let's talk about the plot first. So the movie starts off where uh, the entire world, basically, uh, is uh, in a very uh, bad situation where we have the Federation, which are the bad guys. And um, they're trying to, I guess, because they're trying to they're trying to invade Naboo, which is a planet, and they're trying to invade Naboo for tax, economy reasons. I'm not even sure. And then at the same time, we have the people in Naboo who are in danger. So we have the queen of Naboo, Queen Amidala, and she sounds like, I do not trust the Federation. I think they will destroy us all. My people are suffering and dying. She sounds like that. <sighs> and all at the same time, we have two main characters played by Liam Neeson playing Qui-Gon Jinn and his apprentice played by Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who will be a key character in the original trilogy. So Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi, they are two Jedis and they are there to sort of solve the conflict between the people of Naboo and the Federation trying to kill everyone and invade the planet. And it didn't go well, the Federation was really evil, and apparently there's this other person, this secret, dark, Sith, uh, Darth Sid Sidious, 
who is secretly pulling the strings in the Federation. He is the ultimate evil of the Federation. So what the Jedi's did was that they smuggled, they tried to smuggle the queen of Naboo secretly out of Naboo to Coruscant, which is this huge city planet where everything happens. It's basically the capital of the universe. And so um, on the way, the ship broke, of course. So they stopped by this other planet called Tatooine, which is controlled over by the huts, which are basically like nomads. And what's special about Tatooine is that it's not under the control of the Federation, meaning that they can do whatever they want and the Federation would not know that. And uh, that's basically act one. And honestly, it's really not all that interesting. And there are all these scenes uh, before the Jedi smuggled the Queen of Naboo, uh, uh, Queen Amidala, out of Naboo, they secretly went to a secret underground city, which is populated by the Gungans, where they met Jar Jar Binks, whom a lot of uh, people hate because, yes, it's a very annoying character. Me, personally, I'm going to be honest here, I, I, Jar Jar Binks is not a good character. He's not a good character. I mean... He really doesn't do much in this movie other than, I guess, trying to be comedic relief while the joke's not really landing. Yes, he's very annoying, um, but um, honestly, um, I think hating Jar Jar Binks is already very outdated. And the, the, the voice actor for Jar Jar Binks had gone uh, through a lot of heat for playing Jar Jar Binks. So uh, yeah, bless, bless his soul. Uh, anyways, Act 1, nothing all that interesting. There's this whole underwater boat chase thing that was just very forgettable. Act 2, it's it's pretty boring. They managed to smuggle Queen Amidala to Coruscant. And, uh, it's, and all the scenes in Coruscant are all talking scenes, political, political talk, Jedi talk. We even see Mace Windu played by none other than the one and only Samuel L. Jackson, and we also see Yoda. And uh, before Coruscant, they were in Tatooine, of course, and there's this whole whole thing about this boy whose name is Anakin Skywalker, who later would become Darth Vader. And that's another thing I don't understand about this movie. Why does, why does young Anakin have to be a boy? And Padme, played by Natalie Portman, looked like she was I don't know eight years older than him don't you think it's a little it's a little odd don't you think and given that on episode two attack of the clones Anakin is a teenager I mean couldn't young Anakin just be you know not a boy but a preteen like why does he have to be a boy and the kid actor for Anakin isn't even that good I mean a lot of the acting in this movie aren't even that good plus the script it's underwhelming. A lot of the lines are just cheesy and and not very realistic, but I mean, come on, what do you expect out of a 90s sci-fi action movie, really? And then there's this whole pod racing scene in Tatooine, which a lot of people say is the best scene in the movie, but I disagree. I don't see anything all that interesting about it. I mean, it had some interesting moments, and it's definitely one of the more memorable moments of the movie, but ultimately speaking this whole anakin skywalker pod racing thing is basically a side quest because qui-gon jinn want to i guess bet on this race so that he can acquire the parts in order to fix the friggin spaceship so this is basically a side quest it has nothing to do with the overall plot with the movie and then we have Act 3, which is basically the climax of the movie where everyone went back to Naboo and there's this huge battle between the Gungans and the droids. Um, and, uh, and then we have uh, Anakin Skywalker trying to attack the droids control ship. And then we have Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Darth Maul. And uh, Darth Maul being the um, apprentice of Darth Sidious. So he's the second most evil character in the movie franchise so far. <laughs> and then we have another storyline where Padme and a bunch of her people are trying to capture the Viceroy who's apparently speaking for the Federation now. So we have 
all of these coming together for one big climax and it actually kind of worked i actually enjoyed the climax quite a bit i really like uh climax scenes where it's multi-parted and ha and it has different phases different stages sometimes it seems like the good guys are winning sometimes it's like they're failing but it always keeps us on the edge of our seats making us question wait are they gonna die are they gonna succeed nobody really knows and i actually really like that um but uh yeah overall these are my thoughts on this movie uh certainly an ambitious movie but is the script great not really is the cgi great nope i mean it's 1999 is the dialogue great nope is the is the characters interesting not really not to me is the world building good it's all right so far is the music good yes it is great john williams did an amazing number in this movie his music is so mystical and fantastical and orchestral it fits perfectly with star wars but I think overall there really isn't anything all that memorable about this movie that really wows me and I just don't think it's a very memorable movie. So uh, yeah, I'm saying Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace is meh and uh, I'm giving it a decent to strong 5 out of 10. So. Have you watched Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace? From 1 to 10, how much you rate it? Like if you like it and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. Yay!